Hey, what's up, everyone? Today, I'm joined by Stefan Helleblad from Within Temptation. Stefan, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Thank you. How are you feeling? I'm great. Saturday, yeah. I was at a show last night here in Montreal, Rivers of Nile. There was actually three shows here in Montreal last night. Um, you're coming here very soon on October 13th at Metropolis yeah. MTELUS. I'll still call it Metropolis for the rest of my life, but it is now called MTELUS, and I'm okay with that. All Let's right. jump into the <laughs> shittiest question that I'm going to ask you. Uh, from here Great. on out, it's going to get way more fun, I swear, but we all got to start with this one. How did you cope with the glorious years, plural, of 2020, 2021, half of 2022, and most certainly, hopefully, none of 2023? How have you been coping through these wonderful times? <laughs> uh, well, um, how having, how was I coping? Well, the thing is that, you know, I guess it was the same for everyone. It went up and down you you, uh -huh. you were you know felt at ease with things like oh, okay i can manage and then you got the feeling of complete despair like <laughs> when is this gonna end what the hell is this gonna be forever am i you know also of course started missing playing live a lot uh -huh. definitely but uh yeah the the plus side is that i got to spend a lot of time with my uh, son who was uh, two years by then amazing so, so that was good. And then, yeah, I spent time at my, my little studio and, you know, uh, doing, building things in there and, uh, you know, rearranging and uh, making it better. So that's what I did. And, of course, played a lot of guitars and tried to write some stuff. So very exciting. Uh, very exciting. Yeah. And it is very nice as musicians. We typically don't get summers off. So... We're yeah. typically playing all the festivals. So the first summer off 2020 was actually pretty sweet. I was I was actually pretty stoked about that. Spending all the time with my children at home, not in a van in Europe, which is, I love it, obviously, but, you know, yeah. every summer uh, know, is sort I of know. the same. And then yeah. I, the longing of performing again was definitely there. So it's yeah. nice that everything is coming back and that we're, we're enjoying ourselves the way we're supposed to again, Stefan. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of the, the most difficult parts, I think it was in the beginning of 2021. 20, I think that's when you start to get some hopes. The vaccines were there <laughs> and everything. It's like, oh, okay, we rode through it. It's all good. And then, phew, yeah, down again. <laughs> that, that, was, that, that was a bummer. At least, at least Sweden, Sweden was pretty zen with how they handled everything. So you, you were oh, yeah. there compared yeah, to definitely. other. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We didn't have that uh, lockdown thing mm -hmm. at all so you got to that, you must, still got that to must have been that. that must have been hell i am very lucky i get to do this so so i everyone was home oh, yeah, so yeah. i was like can we do, yeah. let's have a chat at, on you know wednesday at you know this time and they're like yeah i'm home <laughs> as opposed to now it's a little bit more complicated yeah, yeah. vox and hops is all about hanging yeah, out with my yeah. metal friends talking about their lives and music while sharing a craft beer what are you sipping on there stefan that we're going to be sharing virtually today well this is uh, called Sir Taste a Lot. Really, oh, I <laughs> it's, love it's that. A, it's a it's a Swedish uh, Swedish beer, I guess. It's a uh, it's pretty nice. It's one of my go to beers when I don't when I didn't you know have time to buy anything else or couldn't come up with something. I think that's awesome. What's well, Sir Sir Taste a Lot? Look at what style of beer. It looks like an amber when you poured it out there. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's a uh, um and it, it's a bit hoppy as well okay, you know it's uh yeah it's it's pretty nice i like that very also, much. but but also easy drinking at the same time you know so it uh, goes is down it, uh, what's the abv on it is it is it is it from the the system bogolet or did you did you is it a craft beer no it's from the system Bologat. it's uh Bogolet. well everything is is from there in uh in sweden Mm -hmm. Unless you want to, uh, unless it's below three point uh, five percent, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then you get the uh, folk oil, the, the the people's beer. Exactly. I don't know why it's called like that, but it's uh, but it is. It's because so. they they put the laws in place to keep the people <laughs> under mm -hmm. wraps. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't you don't get to. It's impossible. You don't get that drunk on, <laughs> no. on the on the folk girl. Just uh, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> it's 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 no. It's no. This, on the other hand, is dangerous. Uh, this is oh, uh, the beer that was at my festival here in Montreal. Heavy Montreal right. presents brutal Montreal. Vox and hops is brutal Montreal. Um, 
on death a killer young death metal band from um, okay. upstate new york uh, are just killing it i had added them to the bill sadly they did not perform at the festival this year due to a med- medical emergency but Le oh, okay, okay. did make them a beer and their beer was still available at the show this is rise from the grave it's a belgian double eight percent so this one you can if you have a few it's it's, it's wacky from Le Fermentau, i love them a very cool metal brewery here in cool. montreal I'm going to crack this. I'm going to pour this out. And I would love to hear about your first beer. Do you remember the first beer you ever drank, Stefan? Oh, no, I can't say I do. It's, uh, uh, it was probably a, a Prips Blue or something really Swedish like that. Uh, and that was back then. It's, uh, you know, it was uh, managing to drink one beer mm-hmm. was a big thing. And then managing to drink two. And then, yeah. then I was pretty drunk. <laughs> actually it's <laughs> like whoa what's whoa, jesus christ but uh that has changed for some reason <laughs> it is funny I those first beers i remember my first beers too you, you would like drink it and we'd have it in the glass bottles back in the day when i started drinking here in montreal just getting it down past that first label <laughs> <laughs> on the yeah, neck of the yeah. bottle was like such an accomplishment and then by the time you'd finish it it was always be disgustingly warm and obviously, I wasn't buying the highest class beer when I was in no. probably too young to drink. Um, so okay. it wasn't the best quality. So as it warms up, it tastes even worse. And then getting to the second beer was always an accomplishment. And I agree with that. And then the work the work that you put in sort of paid off if that was the goal of the evening. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so speaking of, of, uh, of class in, in, in beer, we used to brew our own. Not really? in a fancy way, but you could you could buy this little kit, little can, yeah. uh, and then uh, you you poured you added water and sugar yeah. to it, and then you just had it, uh, you know, in your wardrobe, <laughs> for brewing there for a week or something. <laughs> and you could like what what is that smell, Stefan? Oh, it was not nothing. <laughs> and then it, was it became uh, became strong, but but uh, tasted like crap. And also, there was a little note in the uh, in the booklet saying, "Warning: If you add 1.5 kilos of sugar to this, it becomes strong beer, which is illegal." Ooh, like, okay. ooh so, no, you definitely oh, no. did, you definitely did not oh. do that. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> would, would would never. No, no, no. no. We, we follow the rules, Canadians and Swedes. We always follow the rules, of course. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's the same, right? To following rules. Yeah. So Cheers. Sweet. Caramel. Um, oh, nice. Lots of caramel, roasted malts going on. Sweet, but still uh, delicately need, balanced. 8%. I need to try that. Rise from the it, it doesn't actually exist. It's actually a rebrand of their, uh, it's called Rambo, the original beer, and they just put a new sticker on it oh, for the show. That's a, a good rebrand. name. Yes. They, they have all kinds of 80s reference names. Uh, nice. I love them to death. I like I, they have very nice people, and they make killer brews um i know that sweden has a killer craft beer scene i've spoken to many many swedish musicians uh did you ever get into it is it something that happened to you uh, stepping away from that definitely not strong beer in your wardrobe to now <laughs> um no i can't i can't say that i did that much it just um i noticed all of a sudden it started popping up everywhere mm. but uh, you had all these little uh, little breweries everywhere especially where, where i live now I, uh, in stockholm there was a uh, we started to see it a lot everywhere which is a uh, just a nice thing because uh, then you get to taste a lot of different you know stuff and uh, you have an excuse to go i'll let's go <laughs> try out some some new beers at the they 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 have a way of doing that to us. This yeah. this, this <laughs> FOMA, the fear of missing out, because yeah, these yeah, yeah. limited runs, and then all of a sudden it's gone. But they're just switching yeah. like one ingredient or something. <laughs> yeah, or, or the label. Uh-huh. It's even it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> they claim that they don't do that because right? I have asked brewers that. Yeah, they claim that no, they I... don't. No, but, that's uh, probably they're probably constantly true. refining stuff, is what it is, and it's like you with mixing and produ- doing production because I know you do that as well. It's a constant evolution when they make mm. a beer nowadays. They're never happy with it, and they always want to make it a little bit better. 
So even if they are just swipping, swapping out the labels, there are slight, slight changes all the time, such as with the production, whether you're like got a new piece of gear or a new yeah. plugin constantly yeah constantly. You, you just just learned some you know exactly some new trick just noted something <laughs> with with whatever gear you're using it's like exactly. oh when i did this it becomes better like oh, okay good good which is <laughs> nice but then you yeah then you, you shouldn't go back and listen to stuff that you did i was a long time ago definitely going to ask that. <laughs> my guitarist in cryptopsy does all our production christian donaldson and he hates anything that's not the most recent work he does basically he's extremely tough on himself are you like that as well well uh, actually not that much uh because I, I tend to already think that okay it's it's quite old it's probably gonna sound really terrible uh, and when i listen to it it's you like you build up oh that. okay it was better than i remember than i thought <laughs> so okay oh, okay good job well done okay. I, I am <laughs> so, so, so you, ha you have to you have to really lower you know your expectations <laughs> and then you know oh okay what's up here so okay that's an excellent <laughs> tactic i like that very yeah. much uh, yeah. classic vox and hops uh, sorry classic vox and hops question um when you were growing up in your parents or guardians house what music was playing when you were not in control of the of the radio what music did your parents or guardians listen to um my my dad listened to a lot of uh swedish dance band which really? is a uh, uh i don't know how to explain it's uh, yeah it pronounces dance band uh which is doesn't say anything it's it's the the music when when you go out and you know <laughs> like dance to with your your partner like electronic dance uh, music or, or the, more like no it's like in swedish so uh, a lot of viking and, uh, and stuff like that and then uh, there was, of course, uh, my mother played some ABBA, of course, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. After, yeah, but I have a uh, my we we spend a lot of time at my uh, my grandmother and my my uncles. They they, uh, they went were into eighties hard rock, so that's uh, that's where I you know got that from early on. I think I got my first uh, ACDC album when I was five, something like that. Amazing. So I was just, uh, I just dived straight into that. It was the best, best music and the best world to to be in. What, you know, what, what, what was kid. it about ACDC that captured you so much? The vocals, the riffs, the 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 vibe. Yeah, good question. Yeah, I, I, I guess everything. Of course, the uh, the riffs, but but also the the uh, the vibe, the, the feeling. Of, listening to them when they, they play together mm -hmm. uh, which is gives you such a nice feeling still today uh, absolutely it's a simplistic to, but yeah. efficient yeah. and undeniably yeah it's just, just just there you know? <laughs> <laughs> and they're still doing it so i love that it's, yeah. it's, you know there's a reason when things stick around that they're sticking around right <laughs> yeah I love it. Um, <laughs> how about your first shows? Do you remember the first show that you went to go see the first live music experience? Um, good question. I I, uh, I grew up on uh, Gotland uh, Island in in uh, Sweden. Really? Okay. So I I didn't get to uh, to go to any shows because mm -hmm. uh, nobody much, goes. it was a uh, was a big ordeal mm -hmm. to, to travel to Stockholm and everything. So. What would be the first? I, th I think it's probably uh, uh, was Portishead or something like that. In, no in, way, uh, that's awesome. In '97. Oh, I'm jealous. I have like goosebumps. I'm, I'm not joking. Yeah, I, I was, wish uh, I saw Portishead. I think it was sometime around that '97, '98. I'm, I'm not sure, but there it was. Uh, you know, I liked them uh, mm -hmm. before I saw them. I wasn't. A, I was not a fan, but you know, live music has that uh, thing sometimes that. But sometimes you, it makes you really understand. Oh, yeah. So this is what this band is about. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is really good. And that's yeah. that's the feeling I had. And it was this uh, outside show, uh, and it started raining, but oh. you know, just a little bit of driplets, and it was dark. It was the light. Just, you know, perfect uh, settings for for mm -hmm. that, uh, that show. So I, I guess that's uh, the first or one of the first. 
I love that. And I, I totally do understand that about you get a different experience with a band's material if you see it live. And it happened to me last night at Rivers of Nile. They were playing their new album, mm-hmm. The Work, in its entirety. And I'm friends with them, right? Because I toured with them and I've been following them and I listened to the work and I appreciated it, but I didn't love it. But mm. now, after last night, I completely un- understand and seeing everyone perform and understanding that these are not samples, they're actually playing these keys parts and the organ parts. Amazing. So I, I completely yeah. Agree that. Yeah, yeah. Live music. It's, Thank uh, God it's back. What a special thing that we get yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. only we can do that, give that gift to more people, which is yeah. which is something that you know we we do sort of get to do. Do you remember your first time on stage? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That was uh, was a terrifying uh, moment <laughs> <laughs> of my life. I think why, I was. Uh, that? Um, uh, I was just too was too much. I think it was uh, was it fifteen probably. Uh, well, I, I probably I had probably done a few like playing acoustic guitar on, mm-hmm. on uh, as a small child when all the parents are watching. Like, okay, was that something was, you enjoyed uh, doing, or was it something that your parents made you do? No, there, there was uh, you know <laughs> everyone that went to uh, the little uh, music school had yes. to to show show off their, their oh, chops. I yes. yes, I understand, <laughs> sort, of, sort of speak. Um, but the first, uh, you know. Playing with an electric guitar I was 15, and it was uh, uh, for school. We had every year uh, the seventh and the ninth grade. I, I'm not sure that translates well into. Uh, no, that's perfect for, for that's, here. That's uh, 13 and 15 years of age. Yes, that. perfect. So, exactly so then, like then, here in Montreal. Then we had a little uh, sort of Eurovision thing, but uh, in school. So every class had to write the song together with the. Uh, the music teacher and then perform it, and That's so a lot of I compromise. Had... That's stressful. That's str- I'm stressed <laughs> yeah. for the teacher just thinking of that and trying to make everyone's influences and what everyone wants it to sound like into one song in a classroom. That's not easy. That no, well, uh, I think he uh, he did most of the, the work, anyways. <laughs> so, but, but a little bit. But then I had uh, so so I played guitar on that, uh, and I had a I had a solo spot. Oh, and that was uh, that the, the only thing I, I could think of, uh, you know, s- hands were completely sweaty and just, you know, <laughs> slipping around. And then it was time. Uh, it was terrible. And so many people, I I don't know, maybe it was 100, 100 or less, but it felt like, felt uh, like yeah. <laughs> a million. <laughs> and, uh, that was, was, was hard. Is that, that, that the was moment? the first. Did you get through it? Would, 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 you succeeded afterwards? Did you have a rewarding feeling afterwards? Because there was nah. a success? Or did, were you not <laughs> content with your performance? I wasn't. I, I, I felt like, uh, oh, that, that's a, uh, that wasn't a nice feeling. And that didn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I got this, oh, that was great. Well done. Mm. If I, but I, I wanted it to, I wanted every note to be mm-hmm. spot on, of course. Yeah. I mean, as, you, as you want to, to well, that's amazing though to, to have it at that you know there, there's different schools of thought of performances right there's, there's the feeling yeah. and the vibe and then there's the other artists that are more perfectionist let's say. yeah yeah and i i had that uh, perfectionist side for a very long time uh, and then one day it just dawned on me that hey it's about having fun as well yes, exactly. and and missing a few notes that doesn't matter as long as there's energy and and the uh, fun because that's yeah. uh, something that the audience also enjoys more than just standing there looking grumpy and trying <laughs> and hitting every note you know <laughs> which was a uh, was what i did first <laughs> so you, you've been I'm involved trying. with with when it, within tape sorry you've been involved with within temptation for a long time you, you were doing production for them before yeah. you stepped in to fill in for for robert um yeah since to 2004 you've been doing production for them so you were always like with the band and i understand what it's like working with producers um my producers is in my band, but I've also worked with people that are not in my band. It's like you're you're a part of the family, and you were throughout the whole time until finally Robert decided to not tour anymore. You step yeah. on stage. Uh, yeah. How 
close from that first solo that you had to do that performance at your school in front of about 100 people to a massive show, I imagine. When you joined the band uh, in 2014, um, what was, how close was that experience? 2011. 2011, even. sorry. Yeah, uh, that was that was pretty much the same experience. <laughs> straight straight up. It was, uh, yeah. it was stressful. It was also, um, so it was my first show. It was in, in uh, Holland, the Netherlands whatever mm -hmm. you're supposed to call it <laughs> i've never learned and of course it was the first show on the tour so you will have a lot of uh diehard fans there of course yeah so the, the, there was this uh feeling of sorrow and grief in the whole room because, because uh, robert wasn't there and yeah. you were there yeah exactly that's hard and, on uh, you like like like, like let's, let's cover the performance part of it and then we'll, we'll touch on that aspect of it because there's other things that happened in my band as well that correlates well with that. So performance-wide, yeah. the, the, the crowd was was grief, which gives you an yeah. extra sense of yeah. pressure to perform even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you would think. Well, <laughs> I think, but for, for, for me, it was, uh, I don't know, I was just, I, I was standing there playing and just trying to take it all in. I think mm -hmm. that's uh, and it, it was scary. I was nervous. Uh, I think I, I I played well, so uh, but I was mostly just standing there. And I, re I remember looking down in, in the audience front row. There was a girl crying and oh the God. boyfriend <laughs> holding her, <laughs> looking at me like it, this is your fault. You're not Robert. <laughs> well, How dare you that not was, be Robert? That was my interpretation. At least. Yes. So, so, yes. So that, uh, For all you know, that like the, the poor girl had like a horrible day. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But or she was artists, crying because it us. sounded so. Yeah. It sounded so good, so she couldn't okay. help. There, I like that. I like that <laughs> yeah. version better. Yeah, that's, that's that's not what happened. <laughs> so that yeah. is no, a so that, was... that you've done. Like I replaced Lord Worm, who was a classic death metal vocalist for Cryptopsy. It was tough, but it was like not as like all of a sudden Robert wasn't there and then you were there. So that must have been, is there many, many times that, that fans come up to you and they're surprised that a surprised how good you are? Cause obviously you are good. Uh, and B that, uh, Oh, you're still here. Where's Robert? Like that moment. Like, obviously this doesn't happen anymore, but those first few years. Let's say. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but I, I think uh, it, uh, I, I kind of gained approval. You know? Yeah. One gig at a time, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, a little <laughs> like this. And then after a while, it's like, oh, all right, it's okay. You're in. It's good. <laughs> we, we, we like you. <laughs> but it works. It works. And, and, you know, Robert still writes all the, the material. He's still a yeah. big part of the band. He just doesn't want to be out there. And that's amazing. And not many no. bands do that. And not many bands no. can, can have that, that balance and, and maturity to say, I love this material. I love doing it, but I can't be out there. No. And for you no, to step on stage uh, and fill the, the his that void is awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's great. It's it's a lot of fun, of course. Yeah, and as you say, he he uh, he, he does a lot of writing, mm -hmm. and uh, and he's he's kind of the uh, our CEO mm -hmm. of the band, so to speak. So so and has the has visual ideas and and uh, you know. Everything like that, so it's uh, it's great, and then uh, and then uh, you get he writes some songs, and then I get a call from Daniel, who is the uh, the producer, and it's like yeah, I have a song here. Can you uh, can you record guitars? Yeah. Uh, okay, send it over, and then go through the the rips. I find something, and I send it to Rude, and then record it. Um, I'm, I record it here. He records it at home, of course. And he sends it to me. I send it back, and then that's how it goes. It's a that's how an inter don't interesting route. Yeah, yeah. That's how your, the most recent release, an EP, just came yeah. out via Spine Farm in July. That's how that came to be. That that mm. method of writing. Yeah. For example, I th think most of the recent stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, years back, it's been, it's been like. But that. it's awesome. It's, it's it's not something that happens very often. So and when I was doing all my reading before this, I was like, oh, we definitely have to cover that. So thank you for being yeah. about it. And I'm sure people yeah, yeah. have talked to you about it before, but uh, 
with my Lord Worm experience. I definitely want to ask you about that. Uh, something very cool is happening very soon. And as this comes out, uh, you will be doing it. Is that you're going on tour with a very small little band that nobody knows called Iron Maiden? No, no so, one heard. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's back a... to, you know you when you were five. No, probably not five years old doesn't make sense. But the, your 15 year old self at that show and whisper into your ear, "Don't give up. Keep doing this. One day you're going to yeah, be on yeah, tour yeah. with Iron Maiden." You'd be like, "Fuck off! You know, don't, <laughs> don't." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that's uh... the thing is that I was uh, I was already I was playing a lot of Maiden. Mm. at that period I, yeah. I uh it's uh oh there's an album yeah, there exactly. yeah but but uh live after death was my the one every 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 night when i came home from school or wherever afternoon i i would play the live after death uh, album uh i'd have it panned to to the left so i only had dave Morris and i would play Adrian Smith's parts and I, I i would i would be there on stage every night i was just a dream you know and now we uh yeah we tour with it so that's uh it's pretty fucking cool yeah <laughs> that's 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 was, fun <laughs> for sure you're gonna have to like just like sit there and just take it in one of those moments of just yeah, take we, it. we did three uh shows with them this summer so Amazing. uh there was a lot of taking in <laughs> but Unbelievable. I, I still have more to do I love that. You are coming through Montreal without Maiden, sadly. On October 13th, uh, Extensive Enterprise is putting on that show. Massive shout out to Vox and Ops alumni. Dave Boucher, that runs that company. I love him to death. Uh, talk to me about Montreal. What is your experience with Montreal? I love it, obviously. I'm from here. Uh, but uh, what is your experience with Montreal like? Montreal, well, it's a uh, kind of cold compared it's it's like here <laughs> so it feels it feels like home yes so that, that's uh, that's uh, step one that makes me like it and uh it has this uh, pretty relaxed vibe mm -hmm. i have to say and uh you know a lot of friendly people wherever you go into bars or whatever which we, if, we definitely will like not to. be doing together on no. October 13th after the show. I'm definitely not coming and we're definitely not going out to taste shouldn't, them. Should, some... Shouldn't drink. That's, <laughs> that's bad for you. <laughs> I never do. But, uh... No, me neither. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a great show. Uh, what is the difference between, and I know what this entails, and it's a lot of work, um, a headlining set versus what you're doing with Maiden? Because you are doing like well, off dates, which Montreal is. Yeah, well, there are of course some uh, crucial differences. It's a, it's a, with headline shows, you, you're there, and and the uh, people that's there, they come to watch you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, doing a show like with Maiden, then then, uh, then you really have to uh, you have to convince the people that's there that that uh, that they should be there and, and listen to you. So it's a it's a different feeling uh no it sparks the nerves a little bit more than mm -hmm. before and uh in a good way mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like to build a different relationship with the crowd when yeah. when you're when you're trying to win a crowd over yeah exactly playing to your family yeah yeah exactly and of course it's uh, shorter sets and mm -hmm. uh with, with less of the uh bells and whistles so to speak yes. around <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it's it's a uh, more you know down to the core mm -hmm. and uh, just just more hard work <laughs> and I I like I like it. It's a bit I, more I like working longer <laughs> sets, uh, <laughs> less more bells and whistles or less bells and whistles when you headline. More when ah, I headline, I like of course. That's interesting. Yeah, and of course it's a uh, it's. It's a different kind of work because it's mm -hmm. a, then there's a there's a there's a longer set of course and uh, so it's physically tougher of course but it's yeah it's just kind of two different uh, ways of fun <laughs> if you want to well well Montreal's going to eat you up um, I'm going to be there I'm looking forward to that already uh, uh, cool. something that I love to talk about recently is mental health uh, I'd love to know mm. how you cope with dark days when you're not doing well what is your tactic to make yourself feel better 
Uh, well, that, that goes up and down. It's, it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's there are some core things that's important to do if you're down, but but if you get too down, then you and you don't remember those, or mm-hmm. or it feels like it doesn't matter because uh, it's just everything is too shit, kind of. But but uh, you know the uh, get out just just get out of where you're sitting and uh, feeling like you're rotting get yeah. out uh, take a walk it would probably feel even if it's just one percent better then that's already a little a, li- a little path upwards and then of course try to remember something that you love doing and, and just do it for a while maybe then it stops this uh never-ending cycle of pointless thoughts that trying to nag on you and take you down if you know what i mean i 100 percent the, the void the yeah. black void the, yeah, yeah, the spiral yeah. of uh, negativity yeah. so just finding getting out moving uh, changing atmospheres and doing something that you do love such as maybe yeah. for yourself playing guitar yeah exactly. other positions and something. That is, working out is another one that i get a lot uh, yeah. When you're on tour and one of your bandmates, let's say, is not having a good day, what do you do to make them feel better? Well, tr- you know, tr- try to talk with with, with him and, and uh, you know, acknowledge, you know, how are you doing? Are, are you okay? Mm-hmm. Seem a bit down. We can always tell when like they're that. not in a good mood. Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then. Uh, no, ask if you want to talk about it, or, and if mm-hmm. not, then okay, leave it. But no, just show that I'm open here. I will listen if you if you want to, and then uh, let's go. Let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take a walk. Same, same there. Now just just do it, do something, you know, together, or at least just talk. I think that's important. Just listen. Exactly. Sometimes it's just yeah. having a physical presence there. Yeah. And yeah. it's funny how being on tour, we're surrounded by people, but we're also somewhat isolated at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting because we're, we're, we're yeah. we have very little private space. Yeah. But yet we're completely alone at the same time. Yeah. Sometimes. It's, it's yeah. very weird. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is extremely weird. And that's the also a thing that, that just uh, goes back and forth. You know? <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden you feel uh, completely alone and then mm-hmm. there's people all over Everywhere. us and then next moment it's like you're one big family and yes. uh, you have never been less alone <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah it's just li- be- like life in general it's uh, uh-huh. like this mm-hmm. everything is waves yeah this is what the producer sees he sees waves I like it the <laughs> <laughs> Uh, collabs. I love collabs. I made this one. I like beer collabs. I like coffee collabs. I've made tea collabs. I, I love seeing my logo on stuff. Um, now, I try to understand what this is, and I would love some explanation of what the Purge of the Dungeon of Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast collab that you guys did. Is that a video game? I don't I don't quite understand what it is. To, be, to tell you the truth, I, I'm, uh, I'm not I don't know that much about it either. <laughs> it looks but cool. it's, I don't uh, know what it is. <laughs> it is. It's a it's a, a character based on on uh, uh, the the, yeah, the the woman from the perch that is mm-hmm. in the video game. Mm-hmm. Our maiden has uh, in in their video game, so it's, uh, so it's in there. I didn't has a video game, and now one of your yeah. characters is in the game. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm understanding. So that's cool. I, I didn't I didn't play the Iron Maiden video game. I, I saw a lot of commercials for it popping up on my Instagram. That's amazing. Uh, See, I didn't know they okay. had a game. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. So, so that's that's what, what that is. It's uh, I don't know if you if you can go fight her or or. Uh, I hope so. That I, I have fun. I have no idea. I guess so. <laughs> I think that's cool. Uh, but if you could do a collab for yourself, something perfect for you, what would that be? And you know, could, I don't know. Has Jackson made you a signature model yet? Is that something that interests you? Or would you rather something more for the studio or something just for yourself personally? That's a broad question. Mm-hmm. That's too much to choose from. 
I can come <laughs> up with one thing. Of course, the uh, guitar is always nice. Of course, yeah, you know, get to uh, completely spec your own guitar. Mm -hmm. That would be that would be great, of course. Um, also, maybe uh, get to do that with a whiskey sort. That would that would Ooh. be great. So just Your completely fine-tune how you want it to be. That would be sick. Uh, that it, would be nice. I'm, I'm going to go with that one. I like that. Yeah. With any distilleries out there listening, Stefan is ready for a whiskey. Has Within Temptation ever made a beer? Mm, no. Not that I can remember. My memory is short. But uh, <laughs> usually with beer, it's uh, maybe you drink it's it. precise. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. If you could make one for Within Temptation, what style would it be? What would you call it? I think, uh, personally, I, I would like to have uh, pretty much into Belgian types, uh, Trappist beers, uh -huh. stuff like that. Uh, wait, my phone has... Okay. Are you there? There you are. I'm okay. still here, yeah. I have, I have like Good. 10 more minutes, right? Seven more minutes. Um, yeah, I would call it, um, I don't know, life doesn't suck anymore, beer, so, <laughs> or, or something like that, you know, maybe tweak that uh, name a little bit, but it sh should be that uh, you see that and then you drink uh -huh. it and so, see, yeah, oh, an, okay, it's, an it's true. It's, it's an elixir. <laughs> it's an yeah. elixir that makes you feel better. I yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like it. I'm over 3.5%. Yeah, three point six. <laughs> <laughs> Put the extra little bit of sugar into it. I like it. Uh, yeah. I have <laughs> one last question. Classic mm -hmm. Vox and Hops wrap up question. Uh, it probably doesn't have it do very often because uh, you know there's three point five percent beers in your country, but uh, every once in a while it happens to everyone. Maybe on um, you know October fourteenth after a night with me here in Montreal will happen. What is your hangover cure? Oh, well, is there one? No. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, so I guess it's, it's basically, you know, knowing that, okay, I really need to get up now and, and uh, eat something, whatever, if, even it's, if it's small, otherwise I, I will reach the, the tipping point and then the hangover will become much worse <laughs> and there's no so. coming back from that. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> So that's, uh, you know, it get, get out, have some small bites and some coffee and then go back to sleep if you need, I guess. Loads of water. That's boring. <laughs> it works. No, I, 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 I guess I don't, I don't have a really good cure then. Is there one? I've heard a lot of things. Um, exercise, Pedialyte is one that comes up a lot to rehydrate yourself. It's basically what mm. you would give children when they're dehydrated, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. your little kids have the yeah, flu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do that too, of course, yeah. So, and, and, and Gatorade is about that. another one, but hair of the dog works. Yeah. But it, it's, that's, that's a temporary solution to a much bigger hangover. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's not healthy. Definitely. <laughs> no, and it usually doesn't feel very good. When no, it's the, like, the okay, next day is really bad. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Stefan, thank you so, so much for hanging out, with, hanging out with me, talking about your life, music, uh, sharing a craft beer. I really, really had a blast. I can't wait. October 13th at M. Talis here in Montreal. Come hang out with Temptation. Myself, I'll be there. Yeah, it's going to be do. a blast. Massive cheers to you. I hope you had fun. Cheers. I, I had a lot of fun. And, and I, I look forward to seeing you there. Absolutely. It's going to be great. And we, we'll have one more. Hey, thank you all so, so much for listening right today. I know that I love and appreciate that. Man, this was an awesome conversation. I am so stoked that Dave Boucher of Extensive Enterprise, the Vox and Hops alumni, and the all-around amazing human being contacted me to set up this conversation with Stefan. I had such a great, great chat. Massive cheers to Dave. Even more massive cheers to Stefan. I can't wait to come hang out with you on October 13th at MTELUS here in Montreal. It's going to be a blast. You guys should join me if you can. Come party with me. It's going to be a killer, killer night.